What's up everybody, it's Cody Woods. Um, we're gonna do an antenna test this morning. I have the FR Sky R9M long range system and I have three antennas for it. I've got the stock dipole, I have the Super 8 folded dipole and I have the True RC True Mox 915 megahertz antenna. Uh, True RC is out of Canada and that is a directional antenna. It's basically a dual element Yagi, so it is cheating a little bit. And I will have to run it with an adapter <laughs> because I think the True Mox was actually designed with Crossfire in mind because Crossfire uses a, an SMA connector and the R9 module uses a dumb RP SMA connector. I hate those things, they're stupid. Um, if I had another, if I had the correct connector laying around, I would have already swapped it out on the inside of the module by now. And uh, anyway, that's a rant. Um, we're gonna test the three antennas. I've already tried to test them once already and I scrapped all the footage because this happened and it took all the wind out of my sails. I had to spend like half the morning finding the drone in the middle of the bean field and it just, uh, it got really hot and I just wanted to go home. Uh, what a whiny little baby. <laughs> but yeah, so we're gonna redo the, the video and I, um, I think I'm gonna do it a little bit different. I do have a GPS sensor in rescue mode and whatnot. Here's my drone, um, GPS sensor. That's right here. All right, so I do have rescue mode set up and I may actually just, I may use it. I'm gonna dial the transmitter back down to about 10 milliwatts of power and just fly out with each antenna. So 10 milliwatts of power, I'm gonna put the stock dipole on, I'm gonna fly out and like a set distance, maybe 2000 feet. I don't even know if I have that much space out here. I did at, at the old location, but I may not have quite that much distance. So um, I'm gonna record DVR. In my DVR, I have the RSSI set up and displayed. Um, I'll, I'll, so yeah, so we'll, we'll record um, each iteration of flight. So stock dipole, fly out and back, record DVR. Fold the dipole, fly out and back, record DVR, two mocks, record DVR, fly out and back, and then compare. All right, I've got the dipole on, the stock dipole. I've got it turned down to 10 milliwatts of power. I've got my quadcopter here, it's set up. Um, I'm waiting for it to acquire enough satellites to do this test. Uh, Basically, I'm just gonna fly out that way. You can see there's some power lines there. Um, there's a, a road close, you know, we've got this road it goes into a T and then, you know, there's actually a road behind, um, like after this uh, this field here. I don't know if we can see it in this video or not, but there's, there's two roads running parallel to us. We're gonna go to the second one. I don't know how far away that is just yet. We'll find out, but um, yeah, waiting for satellites. Um, yeah, I've got my dipole on. It's going to be the first flight of the test with the first antenna. I don't quite have everything set up, so yeah, that's all the intro we need here. I'll just uh, I'll switch over to this footage here on on this quadcopter. All right, you can see we have eight satellites talking to the uh, the GPS receiver. Got my dipole on. Um, I'm, I've got it in a horizontal polarization to match the antenna on the quadcopter and we're just gonna fly out. I'm gonna try to square up with it. And we're gonna fly out to the second road. Um, we'll see it here uh, if we didn't earlier. All right, so test number one. Looks like we're floating. Well, we're, we're good to go. All right, I'm just gonna take off. I'm nervous, man, because I don't wanna have to find this thing again. All right. And I don't know why my OSD data is flashing. If someone has any answer to that, please leave me a comment. It just started doing this. So we're only a few hundred feet out. Looks like we're already down into the 70s on RSSI. And we're to that second road, so I'm gonna come back. I guess I'll go out again, just for good measure.
looks like mid 70s Not bad, mid 70s. Um, I didn't see how far out we got. Probably like 800 feet is my guess. We'll see in the DVR though. All right, I'm gonna get the quad. I'm gonna switch antennas to the folded dipole. We're gonna do it again. All right, guys, same test. I'm gonna fly out and back a couple times in the same location, in the same manner. I've got my folded dipole on. This is the Super 8 antenna by FR Sky. It's about a $10 antenna. Um, and we're gonna record DVR and we're gonna see how good the RSSI holds up if it uh, maintains above like 74, 75 ish, or if it's worse, or if it's better, we're gonna see. Um, same quad, same battery pack. Um, nothing more to be said about that, I guess. All right. Same horizontal polarization, and got a guy mowing now, so might be a little bit higher noise floor. Um, looks like we got 10 satellites. So that's awesome. Let's try her. Uh, 11 satellites, that's great. Uh, we got the flashy OSD, so that's pretty cool. Not really, I hate it. So I did, I did switch to longer uh, screws because I got a TPU mounts. And I don't know if my screws are just too long maybe they're touching some windings in there so looks like about 74 75 on the rssi again i'm gonna turn around gosh that actually looks pretty fair on received signal strength Man, I may need to go out further to get good data. Man, my video signal is just noisy, ain't it? Why is it so noisy? Ah, man. This stuff's kind of frustrating, ain't it? Okay, well, unfortunately, there's no real change, it seems like. Oh, that was awful. Why did that happen? Yeah, so now I'm just playing around seeing why. Why did my video feed cut? I don't know if that had anything to do with the power lines. That was wild, though. Oh, man. Shaky, shaky. So this battery's almost done, so I'm gonna go ahead and spin the rest of it.
Whoops. Man. I need to stop letting my posture get so bad when I'm doing this stuff. Ugh. So that didn't yield a lot of information. It seems like the folded dipole and the stock dipole have performed about the same. Uh, so I guess I'm going to go and throw the true mox onto the transmitter. I do have to put a adapter, an adapter in line. Um, the FR Sky R9 module is an RPSMA connector, which stinks. I don't like those things. I wish they didn't exist. Um, so I'm going to have to run an adapter because I think the true mox was actually made for the, the crossfire system because Trappy did the right thing and put a an SMA, just a regular SMA connection on the crossfire. So we're going to we're going to lose a little bit of gain at that connection, but it shouldn't be much, especially if the connector is made of a material that isn't terribly lossy at 5.8 giga or um, sorry, 915 megahertz. Shouldn't be a big deal, but it's worth noting that we do have to add an adapter and I'll show that in the video. Battery died. Um, okay, so I have I have my true mocks on. I do have an adapter, like I said, I'd have to. Um, we'll see if the adapter is working well. It should. I think I got decent adapters, but you never know. Um, I got them off the internet, so. Okay, I think we're set up. Let's turn this on. Even though I don't think I'm gonna be using the GoPro footage, or at least not much of it from that, the drone. All right, let's 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 get on with the test. Oh, and if you know, if you know like what may be causing my OSD data to flicker like that, leave me a, leave me a, a note in the comments. I, I'd certainly like to hear um, your thoughts and opinions on that because I'm I haven't really looked into it so okay that's all I got let's get on with the test it is annoying though so I'm gonna go um, to keep my footage straight I'm gonna go show this in front of the quad so I can yeah I've only got eight satellites, which should be enough for return uh, rescue mode. Again, I'm a little bit nervous. <laughs> I hope the video doesn't drop again. That wasn't very cool. All right, there's no people, so let's do it. There's the flickering OSD. Please leave me a comment if you have any idea about that. All right, we seem to be holding holding on to the the 80s with the true mox. That's in, that's impressive. Uh, we're getting a little high. I think we're experiencing a little wind. Let's turn around the other way. All right, so it was a little bit better. It seemed that we uh, only hit about 78 or so. Let's go back out there. I'm going to try to stay lower and um, to replicate my other flights a little better. But yeah, it does seem to be holding on a bit better. That's nice. So this is a directional antenna. You're not gonna be able to fly behind you as well because um, you're gonna be in a, you know, one of the, uh, well, the, the rear lobe or side lobe of the antenna. All right, just a bonus run here, holding on to the 80s. Um, Barely brushing maybe uh, the upper 70s there. Of course, it dropped into the 70s as I, as I made the turn, um, experiencing that null in the receive antenna.
Well, that wasn't great. Oh, what an idiot. Telemetry lost. Yeah, telemetry lost. All right, well, the, uh, the true mox is definitely a little bit better. We've uh, been able to confirm that. So let me go pick up the pieces of my quad now. Okay, so in conclusion, the, the stock dipole and the folded dipole performed very similarly. So I personally am going to continue running the Super 8 antenna because I like the form factor a little better. It actually allows me to fit the transmitter with the antenna on it into the case that I have. So yeah, I'm gonna continue running that antenna. We did the, the RSSI, the reception was better with the Moxon antenna. And frankly, quite a bit better, you know, like five, six, seven um, points on RSSI. Is that percentage? I'm gonna have to look into what the units are on that. It might be percentage. It might be, I don't know. If someone else knows, again, drop, drop, drop that info in the comments. I would sure appreciate it. Um, or I can watch some, some of Bardwell's stuff. I'm sure he knows. Anyway, so long range, definitely get the, uh, the true mocks. Uh, you will see a, uh, an increase in reception. Um, just note that it is a directional antenna and you will have to make sure that your craft is in the main beam of the antenna in order to receive the good, the good signal. Um, yeah, so stock dipole, not a bad antenna. Folded dipole, the Super 8 antenna, also not a bad antenna. Better form factor, worth the $10. If you're long range, the True Mox is about $20. Bucks. Um, and also, FR Sky has their version of the Mox on. I think it's called the Trip 9. Correct me if I'm wrong. Um, that might be a good option. I'm sure it has an RPSMA connection on it. I did see that the, the gain number was a little bit lower than the True RC model. And even with the... Even with the... Uh, the adapter in place, the True Mox should have more gain than the Trip 9. But it's like $15, so that's a pretty good option. Um, yeah, so it's true. The True Mox is the best antenna for this system out of these three antennas. I will know until somebody comes out with better. I guess you could put a Yagi on it, but um, all right, that's all I got. Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Um, any uh, concerns, put them in the comments. Again, um, I'd, I'd appreciate your feedback. Catch you in the next video.